Hello everyone. Welcome to the Straight Talk Vermont show. Before I get to my guests, I'm going to make a little updates about uh, what we're doing at Art So Wonderful Gallery. We have events in there every month. And uh, we had DJ Raul in there last week, and uh, Youth Symphony Orchestra, we had jazz, Jack, Jack Hanson Jazz, Jack Hanson, <laughs> <laughs> he, he played jazz in there. And, um, and we're coming up, we have our Marriott, we come up to Marriott for our art show real soon, so you'll hear about that. But stop in the University Mall and check out our uh, art gallery. Everything's for sale in there. It's, it's really nice in there. My art director, um, uh, Landra de la Cuesta, put it all together. She's a curator. So much nice art. It's artists from all around the state. You know, we're selling their art for them. And uh, it's so nice. It's over 5,000 square feet. So it's, it's really, you, you really will really enjoy it. So stop by Art So Wonderful at the University Mall. Um, and just check out the art, you know what I mean? You got postcards and um, handmade postcards and cards and that too, you know. You don't have to spend $3,000 on a painting or whatever. But, um, so now, I want to talk about, uh, talk to my amazing friend, almost, <laughs> <laughs> Zara Hightower. She's awesome, you know, she's here today with us. Um, and so, Zara, how are you? Thanks uh, for joining, coming on our show today. Thanks, I'm doing yeah. well. I am upset that I didn't know about your art space before. Yeah, I yeah. just bought art for my bedroom oh, a few wow, weeks ago, wow. and I did not Darn buy it. it from a local Vermont artist. Oh so man, I wish I'd yeah. Done that. <laughs> wish wow. I'd known. Yeah, it's all right. You know, you it's, it changed every three months. Uh -huh. You know, so we have art. In the, the contract is that you no, know, you it changed every three months. But since you're talking about art, so wonderful. Let's just say one more thing about it. Yeah. And like so, we. We, we love artists, you know I mean? I love artists, that's why I open that space up, you know? Uh -huh. And that um, we know how um, Vermont are artsy people, right? And, um, and music, you know, mm -hmm. Vermont is artsy and music. Uh -huh. and so we do both, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. But the thing is how we treat our artists is that um, mo a lot of art galleries that we did, I, I did my due diligence because I don't know nothing about art galleries. I don't, uh -huh. I'm not an artist or nothing, is, is that, um, they charge the artists to hang their art, uh -huh. and then they charge them like uh, 45 to 50 percent when they sell their art. Uh, so uh -huh. we don't do that. Uh -huh. We we um we charge you nothing. My, my art director uh, Alondra will pick out your art, and we charge you nothing to hang your art. Uh -huh. And when you sell it, we give you 70 percent. So uh -huh. we only take 30 percent. Uh -huh. You know. So how wonderful that and people the artists are like. Are you serious? <laughs> you only going to take uh, thirty. Uh -huh. You know, they be like, they can't believe it. You know what I mean? Right. And then with a space like ours, because they don't see art galleries in malls. You know what right. I mean? And ample sizes ours. You know. Right. So yeah, so I want to add that, let you know that we love artists. You know what I mean? Yeah, I love that. Yeah, we love artists. So next, you know, I'm at the. I will be there. Yeah. It will happen. Yeah, I we, DJ Raul was in it last. Who we had? Uh -huh. Shelvin Vineyard was in there. I miss DJ Raul. I know Shelvin Vineyard <laughs> yeah. was there. Oh my God! We you know that's one of our sponsors. They was in there serving wine. We having a great time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they were like, uh, "Yeah, Chef Vinny is our spot. We love them when they come." Cause yeah. I'm sitting, I'm like, I said, I'm sitting right next to you. Uh -huh. you know, I'm the wine people. Uh -huh. But um, so Zariah, so you are um, Burlington City Council woman. Uh -huh. Is that how I say it, woman? Uh -huh. Not council men. Counselor, just counselor. counselor. Yeah. That way, you keep it. Oh yeah, keep neutral. it. Yeah. See, I'm learning something. <laughs> That's great. So, um, how long you been? How long you been a counselor? I started in March, so I was elected March 2020, and then I got on the council in April 2020. Wow. So, wow. a strange time to get on the council. So right. it's definitely, um, definitely an experience. Yeah, yeah. So you, all your meetings been Zoom. All of my meetings have been Zoom. Um, yeah, it was appointed over Zoom. Everything's been on Zoom. <laughs> we had one kind of informal meeting once last summer at, in person, but that was at Battery yeah. Street Park because it was one of the oh, public wow, safety cool. meetings. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. Man, I'm telling you, I can't stand the damn Zoom stuff because I'm so in person. You know, I man, I like to be right in, in talking to yep. the person. Mm -hmm. That Zoom stuff, you know, I'd be like, okay, star six, you know, and you know, I'm like. <laughs> I don't want to hear nothing. I'm like, I don't right. hear nothing from me. I might just put my picture back up there. <laughs> you know, I'll be around doing stuff. And I can't stand Zoom, you know what I mean? It's yeah. just pitiful, you know? And um, we had, a, um, I'm, I'm with the Winooski School District uh, Anti-Racism um, Advisory. Mm -hmm. And we had our first meeting outside the school. Uh -huh. We was outside underneath tents. Yeah. It was so wonderful to, to talk to everybody because normally, and it's two hours. Yeah. Normally, I'm like, Right. It's too long, you know. Right. Two hours. You used to be three right. hours. Can you imagine? 
And I also feel like we've just packed in more meetings because to some extent it used to be like, especially city meetings, it'd be like, oh, well, I have to give myself time to go from this place to this place. So you're also just getting a break just in terms of like, for us, biking everywhere. Right. Like, Yay. you're just like, oh, I get my 30 minute break break. Yeah. And now it's like, this meeting ends at 9.59. Mm. The next meeting starts at 10. Yeah. So, yeah. I know. Yeah. So I'm glad I'm glad we're opening back up. Yeah. Now, do you sit on any, is it any special committees that, 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 that the counselors have that they sit on? Yeah, so last year I was on CDNR, Ordinance and Public Safety. This year I'm still on all of those, um, plus the Joint Committee of the Public Safety and Police Commission, which I chair. And then oh, that's right. um, I also just joined the Board of Finance <laughs> yesterday. That's so. right, you get on that money, girl. <laughs> it means you're on that, on that loop, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> People like us, you know what I mean? Well, let me say, ask you something about the um, Police Commission. Uh -huh. I know you had said that to me before, and I forget why we were talking about it, but, you know. Mm -hmm. um, now, so they're looking for a new chief, right? Uh huh. And um, so it's, it's a national search. Uh huh. Much, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. and, so, um, what's a national search mean, first of all? Yeah, a national search just means that they're advertising in na on national platforms mm -hmm. and taking candidates from anywhere in the state. Uh -huh. in, in the states. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, wow. So. Um, that's interesting because it seems like they always hire somebody from the police department, which is, which is, which makes sense. You know what I mean? I mean, well, they they deposed him. He came from New York, though, right? He's Del Poza came from New York, and I think, and don't quote me on this, but I believe that the current um, acting chief, John. John, came from the same oh, department right. and followed. Yeah. Maybe yeah. didn't follow Del Poza here, yeah. but well, was... yeah, they was like buddies. Which nothing wrong with that, you know, John, uh, John, um, you right. mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I you know I work I work with the um, police chiefs around the state, you know, different things, youth stuff and um, community stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Vermont State Police, fair partial policing, and um, and so um, I get it that um, how they, like all of those police stations, all those police stations need they never meet their quota of hiring. Uh -huh. they, since I'm I've been on that thing for years, uh -huh. they never they can never meet that quota. Uh -huh. You know, of hiring. Um, um, people to join the police forces around, you know, they, I don't know why, but it's, do, do you, you know mean, why? well, so like there's, police officers who they try to, they want, they, if they want a hundred, hundred police officers, they only have like 90, they still, uh -huh. they just never can meet their quota of hiring. Yeah, They're I know that the highest, somebody. when Burlington had the city limit at 105, the highest that they ever had was, I think, 101, but part of that is also is like, when you have a quota, it's hard to meet that quota because like, if you can't go above it, mm -hmm. which I think, I, at least in Burlington, it's usually been set as like a cap. And mm -hmm. so it's hard to go above it because when it's a cap, then you know, if you can't go above it, then it's hard to meet it, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because Vermont State Police, I don't know how many they need now, but um, I think it was, they was like, um, one of the majors said, Bruce, we're looking for 50 troopers. 50? <laughs> wow. Yeah, and then, um, and then the police, some police officers, some chiefs told me, yeah, Vermont State, we'll be jacking our, jacking their, their um, you know, investments. They've been jacking their um, candidates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> out of, um, at at um, Putney or whatever that uh -huh. um, you know, academy is, you know. Mm -hmm. They'd be jacking them <laughs> Vermont State Police. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> See, they're not playing fair ball. Uh -huh. they, you know, they don't play fair ball because the, the local police, or they'll jack some of the Vermont State Police uh, uh -huh. cameras if they could, you know what I mean? Because they right. just, that's how bad they need them, you know. Right. It's all good, you know. It's a fair fair, fair game, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. And so, um, so what do you do on the commission? Um, yes, on the the joint committee or any oh. of them. Well, I'm the police commission. I just want to talk about Yeah, so I'm not on the police commission, but we have oh. a committee that's been, it's three city councilors, which mm -hmm. are the public safety committee. Oh, gotcha. And then the seven police commissioners, um, which are the police commission. And so we've had a joint force over the past, um, not quite, but almost a year now. And the majority of what we've done is, um, I guess try to advocate for alternative solutions to some extent, but really what we've done is um, hired the two consultancies that have been the first one, the Talitha, I don't know, there was a big community survey that just closed a few days ago about like what we want in public safety generally. And then another one that's happening right now of an assessment of the Burlington Police Department. So an assessment of the Burlington Police Department. Yeah. So 
So I was sat on this um, advisory board for um, called Uncommon Alliance some years ago. Mm -hmm. And our goal was to work with all the different chiefs around, um, primarily around Chittenden County, to um, get data collection on back, you know, for um, back of the tickets. And now if you get a ticket, you look on the back and you see your ethnicity. And then what do you do? African American and da da da. Right. And so um, to get some accurate da data. Right. And, um, and so um, that, that, that was, I'm glad that that, that happened, you know what I'm saying? But, but uh, last time we uh, looked at, at the report, it, uh, traffic stops or whatever, like in Burlington alone, like 80, 85% of African Americans were stopped. Uh -huh. Come on, man, it's only, it was only 0.1% <laughs> of African Americans living in the state. Uh -huh. But 85% of uh -huh. people who look like me were stopped, you know? Come on, how, how does that work, you know what I'm saying? That, that's not fair, you know, it's gotta be, you know, that's, that's, they say, they say, you know, um, um, like the, some of the chiefs say, you know, well, we're, we're, we might be a little biased against. I say, man, that's, that's, that's racial, that's discrimination. They, you know, they won't <laughs> use the word racial discrimination. Right. They use the word, we might be a little biased. So I asked a Major Jonas one, one year when I was said, I said, because there was troopers in there, you know, we might be biased against. I'm like, everybody uses it. I said, I said, wait a minute. Everybody saying bias again. This is racial discrimination. I don't know because I'm driving my Jag down North Street, <laughs> you know, with the music playing B or something, you know, you're going to stop me because I'm you hear Tupac or something playing, I'm driving my Jag with my hat turned back, you know what I mean? And, like, why will you stop me, you know? Obviously, it's racial discrimination. Again, I'm in high-risk economic challenge neighborhood or whatever. And then Jonas told me, well, Bruce, they can't use, if they say racial discrimination, that's against the law. <laughs> right, that's something they have to fix, which right. is part of... You know, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I said, oh, I see why they say bias against now. <laughs> right, and I think to some extent, like, and I don't know the history as well as some other people do, but I think, you know, the Burlington Police Department has kind of been pushed to be more progressive. And they like to say, you know, like, oh, we've done all of these things. And it's like, yes, every change that you've made, though, for some ex to a large extent, has been pushed by people being like, you have to do better at this. Mm -hmm. And so, like, the last one, I know there was a police commission meeting. I wasn't there, but um, John Myriad was talking about these discrepancies. And he was like, what do you expect us to do, get rid of them? And it's mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Why are you shocked by the fact that we're asking you to, yeah, get rid of them? <laughs> Yeah. So one one more thing about the police. So like um, one of the Winooski students on his anti-racism um, advisory, mm -hmm. not one of them, but a group of them, alumni, and you know, want to get rid of the uh, resource officers like gun. Want them to dress down. You know I mean, look, look, you know, look, take away some of their role as like a um, punitive person. Yeah. And, um, that's part of one of the demands. Yeah. And so, um, so we discussed a little bit of that yes last night in our meeting. And, um, and so, um, like for me, like I, 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 you know, like when, when I go to, uh, I'm helping uh, SS Police Chief Ron uh, do this National Night Out event. So we're working on that to try to get. It. And so one of his um, um, corporals or sergeants, John is on resource officer. And when you look at John, John is dressed down. You know, he's, you know, you know, he's got his gun on his side still, but he's all dressed down. And um, he looks like, you know, not like a f police officer, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, and I, I think that um, what the students want, they don't want the police officer to have no gun or, or whatever, you know? And um, I can I get the part of him dressed, them dressing down, maybe put on like a Hawaiian shirt with the, over mm -hmm. the gun, but they want to get rid of the gun. And, and I remember Calabine, Perfectly clear, you know. I'm, that's one thing I'm, I'm. I get it that I want them to dress down and give away some of the punitive things, like some of the punitive things that that should be hand, who should handle it. That they got now they have a coordinator there for restorative justice. Mm -hmm. um, they they, they want to hire on social workers. Those are the people who should work with the uh, students who might have some high risk stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. um, instead of the police shouldn't answer those questions. Yeah, I think the the, I mean the problem with really all of this, but like school resource officers is like, part of the reason that we say we have school resource officers is, you know, school shootings. Mm -hmm. But no school resource officer has ever stopped a school shooting that we know of. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, and I was on the, the task force for the Burlington School District and like, I don't think that that's the value of what they do just because there's no data that they do right. that. Right. And, but I do like, so I was on the school, I was on the Burlington School Task Force and I was on it with two of the school resource officers, one of them who's um, left for another position or 
maybe the airport, I'm not 100% sure, mm -hmm. but another di um, division. And um, I think the real value of a school resource officer is not like having a policeman in schools, it's that when kids do have to interact with a police person, that it's someone who cares about youth. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think there's a lot of advantage to having them in schools. I think that most of the things that we're trying to prevent, like school violence, you can't prevent by having one person who has a gun mm -hmm. in the school, right? right. That's not how no, you no, prevent true. school that's violence. True, true. And I think another thing is there's just a lot like schools, like kids are really complicated. Like we live in a world that's really complicated. They have access to more and more things. And I part of, part of what I th at least thought is talking to some of the principals is they don't know how to handle some of this stuff. And they're like, they don't know who to turn to. If a gun shows up in their school, they're like, I have no idea what to do right now, right? Like I was not, this isn't part of what I was right. trained for. Right. I'm an right. educator, like I'm supposed right. to help educate yes. children. Yeah. And so, and young adults. And so I think it's, yeah, I, I mean, I have a lot of empathy for that, yeah. but I don't think that's saying, well, like, well, in the real world, we use like, you know, handcuffs and yeah. police people. Yeah. So let's do that in schools. Just, yeah. I don't see that as the, right approach so, so what do you think about so you think you do you think that um, there should be resource officers in the schools i think that there should be school resource officers and that there are officers who are a resource to the school so if the school has a question or they have a problem or they want to do a training you know like on you know like active oh, shooter right. drills things like that that there is an officer mm -hmm. who knows the school mm. and the schools and the buildings better than the other officers and can advocate to, so I do think that advocacy part and that relationship part is important. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there should be um, a full-time yeah, police what person is it, stationed. Is, with like yeah. a police station in the in the, in in the, the school, school. Yeah, and, with officer with, with uniform and gun. Right. I think then then we're starting to address symptoms to problems that a police officer can't solve. Oh, cool. Well, I'm going to have to remember those key points you just gave. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, write a, I'll write you an email. I'll All send right, it out to you. Thank you. <laughs> you, can, I, you can read the 20-page report that we that's did, right. too. I like, I like what you just said, though, you <laughs> know what I mean? Because there's some great ideas and it's good points, you know what I mean? It's, and um, I think that, um, we should, um, you know, um, people, there are some great ideas. I mean, that's, that's, that's really good points, you know? Right. I mean, I think it's like proven that like some of the things that are really effective at like reducing school violence is things like making sure that you know kids families yeah. have enough to sure, eat and sure. that there's like that you're yeah, taking yeah. care of the families yeah, as definitely. opposed to just like punishing the kids for being in bad situations. I see situations. why you're a counselor. <laughs> she got some, she, 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 she for the people, everybody. That's right. So, um, wow. I'm, you know, that just blew my head up right there um, because, um, you know, um, I don't know. We haven't, they haven't got to the steps or the points or, or what they, you know, how they want to deal with it. You know, I mean, they just had these um, nine demands, you know, and um, that was just one of them, you know. And um, then we started justice. Then I got a resource on um, Kayla from um, Spectrum. Is she um, trained in restorative justice? She's one of the coordinators that's working with the schools. And she worked at other schools. I think she worked at Burlington, too. Uh -huh. But, um, you know, and so I'm on. I'm on the restorative justice team. <laughs> you know, because um, that's important to me. And I'm, I'm. I'm a founding member of the Community Justice Center around the state, starting in Burlington in 2000. And, um, well, 19, 2000. So we're founding member. We built that. When people from Australia came and taught us how to do it, right? The charity. And it was funny because they had. It's just. It's that's where it's from. You know, what I mean, it was um, community justice center type. Not necessarily the name, but they would come and meet, like people, the elders would meet in a, in a restorative justice circle and the victim and the offender would be together. And they both had um, support people with them and um, the victim and the uh, offender. And they would talk about how, the, how, with the harm they caused and what the community people would speak out about, right. you know, what they, the harm they caused. And so the um, offender can understand the, the harm he caused. You know? And then the whole goal was to make amends to the individual or the community that you offended. And it, it, and this this makes so much sense. That's where I got it. Well, they asked me to be on it, but that's that's the reason why I'm on it, you know what I mean? Because why I'm going to help create it. Because I thought that makes sense. I mean, instead of going through, some things don't have to go through the traditional right. um, court system, you know? Right. What do you think about that? And even, I mean, definitely. And even things that we, um, that we traditionally think of, like, oh, this, this is the exception. This has to go through the court system. And this isn't a, like, everything example but like um 
one of the places that I first learned about restorative justice was in Rwanda, which, you know, went through a genocide in mm. 1990. And they used, you know, they used um, the court systems for some of the like leaders and for some of the leaders of the genocide, but for a lot, like, it was so widespread that it was just neighbors again, like, mm -hmm. killing their neighbors. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so they ended up using, they were like, well, we can't, like, this, we can't just jail everyone, mm -hmm. like, or mm -hmm. take everyone through the court process. And so they had just this, like, ongoing process of, like, family restoration and being like, well, you killed my husband and, like, in these similar kinds of things. And so I think, and, I think there's a lot to be said for both perpetrators and victims and moving outside of the court systems and the like industrial like prison complex mm -hmm. and to the extent possible, yeah, doing these things in a restorative mm -hmm. way and talking about harm instead of talking yeah. about crime. Yeah, yeah, because it makes so much sense because like, uh, for example, like, uh, um, like for the um, victim, like she have a support person with her and she might say, um, like, oh, you, since you broke in my friend's house, um, I used to be able to um, go um, to, um, through the back, my yard, to the back door with my robe on, and we have coffee in the morning. Now I got to dress up and go around through the front, you know what I mean, door, knock, knock on the door, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, so you, I lost, we lost some, you know, personalities there, some personal mm -hmm. stuff. And, um, and the, um, let's say the, um, offender support person might say, when we walk down the street, now uh, people think I'm like you, you know what I mean? Like I'll break in the house or whatever, you know? And so that the, vic the offender can see the harm that he's, you know, he can actually really see the harm that he's done, you know what I'm right. saying? And then, you know, there's be like when well, now the tax is up, we had to, put, we had to spend money, put uh, spots, um, light, spotlights on our building and, you know, because people like you, we have to create, you know, programs and you know see how he, he see right what, yeah the harm that he's done or she done right and so um so that's what i like about the community justice centers you know and they, yeah. exactly the victim actually i mean the offender actually see the harm that he's done or she's done you know? they yeah. can feel they understand it you know instead of just like okay you know you're being going traditional corner you broke in social social house and right. that carries off three to five and Right. How do you plead? You know what I mean? Right. You know, it's very say, impersonal yeah. <clears throat> when part of the reason that crimes happen is people not. Tra it's it's funny that it's not funny. It's sad that in response to us not treating each other with enough humanity and really seeing like how our actions affect other people, that we just put them in dehumanizing situations. Right. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, you hurt this other person because you didn't see their humanity or didn't think about it when you were doing this thing. And in response, we're gonna not treat you like a human. That doesn't help you treat other people more like mm -hmm. a human. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, um, what was it, this last weekend? Uh, yeah. We um, sat here or something. So we um, repainted Black Lives Matter in the street. You uh -huh. know, the mayor, everybody was out there. Your peeps, were, all your people was out there. My people. <laughs> well, I mean, your people meaning, meaning like politicians. Like politicians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a politician. I just know a lot of them. You know I mean? <laughs> kind of like, yo, make this work. You know, I'm not, I'm not running for nothing. You know, I, you know. But anyways, um, I don't mean you, you know what I'm trying to say. I, yeah, you know, I okay. do. But um. Um, so we put Black Lives Matter in the street again, you know, so, and then, um, 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 Karen was out, Karen Paul was, mm -hmm. out, was out there. She was like organizing, coordinating all the things and she was painting her butt off. And then she was telling me some other dates that they're going to do it again, you know, whatever. So what does Black Lives Matter mean to you? We got one too. We have a, my Art So Wonderful got one on Union Street, you know, the old YMCA building. If you drive, go by, you see Black, I don't know if you've seen it, it's right by, it's right on Union Street, you know. And it's mm -hmm. right on the old YMCA. It's gonna say Black Lives Matter. We put one up there too, you know. Yeah. You know? But um, what what does that mean to you? Black Lives Matter. Yeah, I think this has been like. So I feel like there's been before the past year, and then this year, and I think before this, it's meant to me because this is how I was raised. It has meant to me that intellectually I know that I'm gonna to have to work harder, I'm gonna to have to do better, I'm gonna to have to be better than people around me in the US in order to get the same opportunities, to get the same pay, to get the same 
everything. And I feel like that's always been something that I've, because it was drilled into me ever since I was a little girl, like that I've intellectually known. And I feel like now that not ever the whole rest of the country, but now that kind of the rest of the country mm -hmm. is intellectually knowing that, I feel like it's starting to mean something different to me. And now instead of just knowing it, I get to have an emotional reaction to it to some extent. So I feel like over the past, it's been like, over the past year, it stopped being, I have to work harder. I have to, I have to, I have to. And it's been like, no, you have to start treating me the way that you treat other people. No, you have to see my humanity. Like, no, you have to. Um, I'm, it's the resp it's not my responsibility anymore. It's your responsibility. Right. And, um, um, yeah, so I guess I would say Black Lives Matter means to me, you know, um, is that, um, like, you know, of course, everybody's lives matter, you know. I just think, like, exactly what you're saying, like, you know, we just, all we care, all we want is to be treated fair and get the same, you know, same opportunities and pay and whatever, like, like most people are not of color, not of color, you know, um, we just want to be treated the same way, you know, you know. Right. It's you know, not my responsibility to not wear a hoodie. It's not my responsibility right. to not fall asleep in the right. spot. It's not my resp It's my responsibility to have that right, just like everybody else does. Right. Exactly. And your responsibility to treat me the way that you would anybody right. else you when know, I do those things. You know. And just like, um, like I think, like people, um, you know, when I came to Vermont, it was the whitest state in America, and so I think that um, a lot of people in Vermont, are, you know, white people are not necessarily prejudiced, you know what I'm saying? You know, we all have some prejudices. But I think that uh, it's because, you know, um, why, why is that their education around people of color? You know, like, we don't live next door to them. We don't go to school with them. We don't go to church with them. We might hang, hang out at the mall. You know, we might not hang out, but we might see them in the malls. But um, um, so how do they get their information about people of color, people who look like me? They get it from a stereotypical, usually. Oh, on the news, that black person, you know, just killed somebody. Um, look at their neighborhood. Um, they're looting and rioting, and you know, all these things they, that you know, that <laughs> more white people do than, 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 than um, people of color do, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if I, like for instance, in Vermont, um, um, never saw a black person, or I don't live next door to you, or go to church with you, or go to grocery store, you know, and we don't hang out or nothing, you know nothing about me, but the stereotypical things that you've seen on TV or read about, you might think that I'm like that, you know what I'm saying, like the things that you hear about, you know, you might just feel that way. And so, so when you meet me, you know what I mean, you say, oh God, this guy have youth programs, comes to the state, da da da, this da da da, you know, and, um, and, and they get to know me, then they, they choose to be like, you know, um, understanding me, you know, so I think it's all about education. I mean, mostly, I don't want, because I, I don't, I don't, my name is psychologist, I don't think about, you know, like, I always think about what's good about a situation, I mean, right. so I think that's what is really neat, uh, it's really uh, what, what it means, I mean, that right. it's more but it's education. Not just, it is, I think it is education, and I think it's also, but like, to some extent, I think it's also recognizing that, like, these stereotypes that you're talking about, were, they're not just like, oh, this, it's not just education like, oh, there's also other black people. It's also education that it's like, oh, and these stereotypes were created by people who, unlike you, did know and they decided, they were like, oh, I'm a politician. It is popular for me to create the image of a welfare queen, even though black women who are single moms are like a small proportion of the people on welfare and create this persona of the welfare queen right. and the media eats it up and portrays three yeah. cases of right. like right. black women who are doing this and right. are like oh this woman I was like registered and whatever it's like so yes and it's education but not just education of right. like oh and here's the other half right. but also education of like and you've also been told a lot of lies right like, right exactly <laughs> yeah no doubt about it and so I don't know if that's going to change really <laughs> you know I mean, one thing I do know is that because um like the little kids like the elementary middle school kids they did so far they're not thinking like that right. they they so like pure or whatever words you want to use, but um, I think they're gonna they'll learn those things as they get older. Like around middle school, like seven, six, seven, eighth grade, then I start you know start getting it. But um, right now, I think um, like you know they, they when you watch when I see them in the groups that I work with, you know like um, youth and um, 
the different, um, like in our youth advisory board, we have um, middle school kids, high school kids, and then it was uh, yesterday, and they all come from, um, have this, they are different ethnicities, you know, they all, and you see them just talking, they, you know, they, it's no, it's like, wow, they ain't no problem, they just, uh -huh. they, you know, they, you know, tapping each other, hug, you know, they just like, how good is that, you know what I mean, you know, they don't have like, you know, they have no stereotypical about, you know, braces or whatever, you know, and so how cool is that, you know, that's awesome to see, and I see that around, you know what I mean, I see that, let me tell you a funny story, so I was um, on Church Street, uh, one year, a couple of years ago, and um, this little girl, you know, she was with her mother, and she was like, um, she just kept looking at me, kept looking at me, kept looking at me. You know, she was like, and I knew why she was looking at me because she probably never seen nobody. Probably they never seen a black person, you know. Uh -huh. Cause she was just, just, she just was stunned, you know, what I'm saying. And so she, and so, um, so her mother let go of her hand. So the little girl came over to me, right? Her mother was like, I don't know what she was doing. And started rubbing my arm like this, uh -huh. <laughs> and her mother said, "Oh no!" So I call her daughter, you know, come back, oh sir, I'm so sorry. I said, "No, let her do it." You know what I'm saying? Yes. Let her do it. I've had the same experience with my best friend's daughter. Like she has grown up with me, but she's like, I'm one of the few people in her life that's dark. And so, like, but when she says something about like the difference in, like our, like you know, like oh, that Zari is brown or like dark. Her mom, who I love dearly, like gets so embarrassed, yeah. and it's like, it's that's when you start to learn, right? right. Is like, because yeah. if you were like, oh, like your skin's so like light, nobody would say anything, right. you know what right. I mean? Like sure. nobody'd be like, don't say that. Like right. it's like like you're pointing out a bad thing, yeah. where when which is what people do, like, oh, right. you're so dark, right. like right. is that real? And right. you're like, yeah, it's really yeah. cool, yeah. isn't it? Right, that should be the reaction instead of like. Yes, yeah, so I've had the same experience yeah. that, and I think that's how we, it's so insidious how we learn like, oh, this is bad because people are very like, you can't point out that this person is black. It's like, yes, right. she can. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Funny. That little girl in her mom, she mom took her hand, it was going up towards her. It was like a mid, mid block, whatever, you know, around by the mall. And she was, she was looking back all the way. <laughs> and I was like, you know, waiting at her. She looked back all the way up. She just like, uh -huh. you know. And um, so, so that was so cool, you know what I mean? I was like, I, that's the experience that, that I won't forget, you know what I mean? And yeah. she was so, you know, like, she just was curious, you know what I yeah, mean? She like, just started rubbing cool, my arm. Yeah. I was like, I'm like, oh no, I mean, no, let her do it. Like, no, no, this ain't gonna come off, it's me, you know? Yeah. And, um, and, and the other day, like, somebody said to me, some white person said to me, wow, I wish I was your color. You know what I mean? And I said, she, I'm trying to get my tan on. This ain't even, this ain't even the color I want to be right now. I'm trying to get a little, Darker, you know. Uh -huh. And she's like, "No, I like, you know, she, they, you know, they like this color." And I'm like, "I'm trying to, I'm told this is, I'm like, damn, I'm trying to get my tan on, you know, what yeah. I mean? I'm trying to get right, you know, what I mean, this ain't even the color I'm trying to be, you know." So that was, that's always funny too because, you know, it's like when um, pe you know, um, white people, you know, always want to get as dark as us, you know, what I mean, and, uh, and that's prerogative, but it's, it's kind of that's kind of weird, you know. The darker they get, the better they feel, and their self-esteem grows, and they feel like um, they're so much beautiful. Or and I don't, I don't. Well, you I know, think that's the. I mean, I don't. I just listened to someone who actually studies this talk about this, and it's the thing of um, to like because there is this like whether it's being like Latine or being black, like it's this urban association and being cool and like. The whatever like ghettoizing right and so it's like you know people like the kardashians who are like well i'm white but i'm going to give up this persona of being it's like what i forget what the technical term for it is but it's basically they're like this is the new black face of like right. putting on like oh i would like to be black or i would right. like to be brown and then profiting off of that in some cases and saying like oh see it's easy it's like no you're a white person who's dark like right. and trying to anyway but that's yeah. and, and all of them got black <laughs> black mates they all of them got some black guy as their partner or whatever right. <laughs> just figure that but anyway so um, yeah so um so um city council so um brian pine is leaving he's going to, um, i guess he's you guys gone. Are, is, yeah. he, is he gone is he y'all voted him on the seat on now yeah so he's gone so what ward is that fifth something what ward brian pine from represent you know? uh he's ward three three mm -hmm. and so um you guys got a how that work to choose somebody else or? so um i don't know so right now the different parties are allowed to have their caucuses so
so each party, the Progressive Party, is going to have a caucus. Oh, wow. This month, I don't remember when. Um, I assume the Democratic Party will as well. So each party is going to choose people mm. to run. Mm. Maybe the Republican Party would. Oh. I think that would be weird since it's Ward 3. I don't think there's a lot of Republicans in Ward 3. Mm. Um, yeah, and then we're going to have an election oh, to cool. replace Brian just for his, just until March. It's a short term. That's cool. Do you live in Ward 3? Huh? Do you live in Ward 3? I'm not trying to be, you know, I told you. I'm not, I, I'm not, I'm not no fault. If, if I was going to run for something, maybe you have to be governor because everybody's got to be on the it's same like page. It's like eight or nine months commitment. You know, it's no. not very long. Every, everybody's got to be on, if I was going to run, it had to be the governor. Uh-huh. Everybody's got to be on the same page. I can't just run a city, you know, not, that's not me, you know. It's yeah. gotta be, everybody's got to work okay, you know, got be on the same page. So. POTUS. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, you know. President of the United States. <laughs> oh, boy. I support, you know, the right candidates, you know uh-huh. what I'm saying? And um, I know a lot of politicians, so I, I, for me, just knowing them and they know my objective with the work I do, work with youth and families and whatever. And um, which we didn't talk about at all, but next time. <laughs> that, that'll be that's that's um, that's the um, that's the biggest thing for me. And like you know, I, my program have over 50 awards for uh, working with um, um, youth and families, and um, we had education on drugs and alcohol, tobacco. You know, with our um, straight talk with my program, that's this straight talk show. And um, you know, it's other things, and we have um, Art So Wonderful, Get Fit Vermont, United College Club. We have a lot of different uh, Vermont local art music. So we have a lot of programs that we work with um, um, youth and families on. And this, this, these programs been around like since United College Club been since '99, and um, most of them been around since 2001 or three. Mm-hmm. We have youth advisory boards who make the decisions on our programs, projects, and events mm-hmm. for many years. You know, so let's talk about that a little bit. Um, <laughs> so. In 2003, um, our program, uh, Service Render Incorporated, which is the the uh, mothership of all of those programs, I'm the executive director, um, created youth on boards for the city. You know, we youth on boards. You mm-hmm. know, youth um, need to be on. So they was on our police commission, planning commission, school board. The city council we had to present to the city council back 2003, and they approved it. Mm-hmm. And they wrote a resolution for it. As whereas, you know, all that yeah. stuff, you know. And so um, since that time, um, like we, I, my organization, we transferred to CEDO. And they kind of dropped the ball, you know what I mean? So there was no youth on boards that was really, um, to me, meaningful, you know what I mean? Like they would get on these boards, you know, say the finance committee. And um, all of a sudden, you know, they was like, well, you know, the finance committee, you look over that stuff, I don't even want to be on the finance committee. That's something like you might, you love, you are already on the finance committee. But um, it's so, to me, it's like, yeah, numbers and boring, and we're going to use this, these dollars for that. And, and so, so a lot of these boards, these youth were on, didn't, you know, all they was like, yay, yeah, nay, you know what I mean? And it's like, they didn't really have no agenda items to go to. Now they're going to have agenda items. Like, if you're on the finance committee, and they see two hundred dollars. They need to figure out. These youth need to figure out how you know how they're going to spend it among their peers. So now it's going to be a little. It's going to be different in our organization. I have my youth board um, president, um, Veronica uh, Lindstrom. She's a sophomore at Brown Country. She's um she's in charge. She, she was on. You've heard her talk probably on the city council meeting. Mm-hmm. And yeah. um and um and so now it's going to be different because they're going to convene those people who who um is on um these committees and you know talk about what you're doing and how you know what's your problem you know how you you know how you um you know what do you think we should do how, how we can, you think you should handle it are you have you know, everything's good in um uh pit you know pit from cedo she's uh she worked for cedo so she cedo is going to be helping us again and um, Brian Pryor, I'm just not a CEDO director. Uh-huh. <laughs> he know I talked to him. We, he was right here talking. I told him, well, you know, you get on this, G, we're going to make sure that, you know, you got to make sure this is popping, you know. And so um, so we're excited. You know, thank you for sponsoring it, you know, <laughs> you know, co-sponsoring it. Oh, man, that's awesome. So, right. That's, that's, you know. Yeah, and I think because part of, I mean, so exciting. I think hopefully with like this expansion of the program we can also help kids youth sorry not kids figure out like what yeah what to do on those boards and if you do want to do that how you advocate for that how you bring 
other high schoolers yeah. to the board and say yeah. like, hey, we think you should do this and yeah. here's all the reasons why and do it. some of that or like back end organizing work <laughs> you as got well. It. That's exactly. You got it. And that, and so I'm glad you said that because uh, one thing I was telling Karen, I told Max and um, uh, Brian, Ali, Dean, is that um we these youth you guys got to be mentors to it. You know, they might nice sit on these committees, but you know, somebody's got to take on some of these. You guys got to take on these kids too. Right? Because you know I mean? adults you know, sit on those committees and they're like, I don't know what I'm doing. Right. <laughs> it's like no doubt. So you got a mentor. We, we got to because they those kids are our future for real. You know, they need to help make decisions on what money spent on what's been done. You know, and um, all these things. You know, I mean, like you know, like people are like what's going to happen in the next five years. You know, what I mean, I hope I'm on like um, Cancun or somewhere sitting on drinking some pina colada <laughs> on a ocean or somewhere, you know, that, that's why I hope in like five years or whatever, I don't, you know, in theory, uh -huh. you know, and so in five years when these kids are like, everybody else is gone, here's these kids like ready to go to work, they should be making decisions right then about what this happened in five years and, and this take on, is they take it on for the next steps, I mean, not, right. not create the whole thing, oh, Zerad, she said this, uh, you know, and uh, they said that, you know, and so, now we gotta scrap it all. Bruce said this, and so now we gotta scrap it all and um, start from the from the bottom. No, we just want you to mentor the following. You know what I'm saying? Because right. you already been making the decisions. Right. You know? So that's right. that's why I suppose where it's easier. It costs less money. It's it's um, you know less brain work or foot work. It's, it's so much uh, right. time, you know, man hours, whatever. Yeah. It's so much better. Yeah. So. Um, so we're so, coming up on time. <laughs> so so um, what's your, what's your um, and you said on a lot of different things, you know. Oh, what about Juneteenth? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for Juneteenth. Mostly because I think Taisha knows how to throw a party. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's good. Um, yeah, I think Juneteenth is going to be exciting. I think it's exciting that the city of Burlington is sponsoring it for the first time. Um, I'm excited that Taisha's, I think she really has a vision for it, came no, here Taisha with a vision is for the, it. Um, Racial Equity and Inclusion and Belonging yeah, Director. Yeah, for the city of Burlington right yeah. now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Taisha Green. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be a great educational event for folks who want to learn more. I think it's going to be a great party for people who just want to celebrate um, mm. no, where we, we've come and blackness yeah, in the city. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so crazy. So, so where is it going to be at? What's the, it's it, going to be all around Burlington. So there's different right. events happening. Mm -hmm. It's like Roosevelt, Waterfront, City Hall Park. Maybe even in this park, I'm not sure. Probably not. It's a little small, yeah, but yeah, 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 there's. They yeah. did a good job of scattering it throughout the yeah. city. So. Yeah, so they have a map, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so um, I, I was invited to be for both, you know, and, and I mean, and in essence, and so um, I, don't, I don't know how I'm gonna do both, but um, we'll see. Um, so yeah, that's awesome, right? Uh -huh. so, I mean, that is. Now, my friend Roy Hill been uh, advocating for Juneteenth from f for a million years. I mean. Uh, in theory, you know, and like he never got nothing like this out of what's going on now for June 10th. Uh -huh. Now, do you think it has something to do with George Floyd? Why is everybody's like, yeah, you know, we're on board with June 10th and we're on board with blackness, we're on board with Black Lives Matter, we're on board with, you know, right. what I mean, equity and inclusion. I mean, everybody's hiring an equity and inclusion coordinator. Everybody. Yes, and so I, w I would say, I don't know this, but I think. Taisha, she started the same day I did on city council, right? Her appointment was the day that I was appointed to city council. And so I think, because she comes from a city that has a big Juneteenth celebration. So she's like, why don't we have this in Burlington? So I think, yes, and I think she always had that vision of making this a day in Burlington. I think some of the resources that she got for this came because of the awareness that came with George Floyd's yeah. murder. And, and and that's and a little bit about that. That's um, um those people supported. I don't say those people because that's me. Those people uh, <laughs> really supported the efforts, you know, to get some um, you know, victory around um, George Floyd. You know, it was like, you know, some things. You know, and there were so many things that like George Flo Floyd. Like, how many names is it? You know, what I mean, um, and then all of a sudden, they, George Floyd was the name that people really res responded to. I mean, white people, everybody around the world. You right. know what I'm saying? This is the injustice. And it was like pretty much, that's effed up, you know what I'm saying? For real, for real. You know what I mean? Right. Like, that's really, you know what I mean? Here's the guy saying, I can't breathe, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, they would put his, you know, they kneeled on what was nine minutes, 28 seconds, something like that. Right. And, um, and um, on his neck, you know what I mean? Until he died, you know what I mean? And like, and the guy had no remorse, and his face was like, 
like like he was just on his knees. He he wasn't like I'm on somebody's neck. You know what I mean? The police officer, you know. But anyway, so so I think that um, why did you know this would be us? You know, what some of our last questions. But why do you think people? Where like white people or people around the world woke up on all of a sudden like God, black lives do matter. People shouldn't well, treat black people like that. You know, they shouldn't shoot. Why do you think that people, you know, other than than and they, you know, you see more you see more white people out there bro, than 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 sometimes in, in some cases like than black people supporting black people. You know, you know, why do you think they just come to life like that, come alive or come around? You know. Yeah, I mean, because I feel like there was a moment, which I think was probably Trevin Martin, where, like, that, where, like, I want to say, like, the closer circle, right? The, like, black people and their, like, closest allies, where it was, like, you know, like, now it's on camera, like, now it's happening. And then these things have been on camera, and I think. So I don't, I don't know, yeah. and I don't understand enough about like. <laughs> movement building or mm-hmm. things to really know, yeah. but I think that this has been a moment that's been coming. Because there's been enough of, mm-hmm. it's been a movement that's been building, I guess. Like I feel like this started, you know, a decade ago in other circles, and it's just continued to build, and then. Yeah, last summer was a breaking point in terms of mm-hmm. like how the awareness of like who we're pull like how big of a tent we're pulling in to be like no this isn't this isn't the society we want to be in. And so, you know, I always think about I always try to figure out like when things seem bad, I always say what's good about it, you know what I'm saying? What's good about it, you know what I'm saying? Like for instance, like if you're walking down the street and you see a dog wagging his tail, you know, he's like, oh, he don't look harmful. I, I could probably walk by, you know what I'm saying? Then when you get up to him, he started growling and And so, the good thing about it, now that's bad because he's about to bite you in the ass, whatever. But the good thing about it is that now, you know, when you see that dog, you, you're going to go across the street. So that's something good about the situation, you know. And so I think, and so that leads me to say that, you know, you know, COVID-19 who killed thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, sad as, and that's bad. It's totally, it's like pitiful, you know what I'm saying? It's like the worst. I mean, I hope I don't have to ever go through my life for something like that again, you know. But I think w- something was good about it was like people was at home. They get to see um, real news about people like us. Um, they want to do, they want to do something like volunteer or take somebody uh, food to the neighbors or they wanted to do more. They wanted to do something, you know, they couldn't go to work and they were working from home, whatever. They just wanted to do more, you know. And um, I think that had a lot to do with it too, is like there's people just really want to do more for people, you know what I'm saying? And they and the humanity and they, and like when people are dying, like when they say like five hundred thousand people died, it it had no face, so you don't say, Well, how many how many white people died? How many black you know, it was just a sad, pitiful you know, it's right. incredibly bad. You know and we saying? were all in it together. Yes, it like right. We were the all whole in, world was in yeah, it together. Yeah. So I, so I think that that showed a lot, you know what I mean, about um, that we could all actually be all together, you know what I mean? And, um, and um, I th- you know, I think that's what we can do. So, yeah, so I, I'm going to leave with that, you know what I'm saying? I just want to add something else. You got any, you got any, um, I just talk about, any announcements, anything you want to say? Any announcements that I really want to say? Yeah. No, the uh-huh. Peace and Justice Center is open. Come visit our store Wednesdays, ten to five, and yeah, that's it. Yeah, we gotta talk about that next time. You know? <laughs> I'm so glad that you uh, you're the um, director. I am too. <laughs> Ed, executive director of uh, Peace and Justice Center. You know, yeah, it's got some history, some long time history, and I know a little bit about it. You know, with Larry McCoy and John Tucker. You know, so you know, right. I, I I appreciate you doing you know taking that job. You know, because you didn't have to. <laughs> you know, I want somebody to twist your arm or something. But you took it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> They're yeah. like, do you want less money and more work? And mm. I was like, yes. So here we are. <laughs> yeah. I know Rachel did a good job for many years, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you for joining us, show Duran Hightower, City of Burlington counselor. Uh-huh. Amazing lady. And <laughs> I do a you. lot of things. You hear all the boards and the committees and commissions she sit on. 
a lot, you know. She's, you know, she's sitting here looking at it like, okay, okay. <laughs> Do you want a meeting at 11? Uh, right, 11. <laughs> All right, so thank you for joining on Straight Talk Vermont Show, and then we'll see you next time.